Live from the Slightly Twisted Deck Bar, it's the Poojee Podcast with Justin Lameen. The Poojee Podcast is proudly sponsored by Cimarron Golf Club, located in Jacksonville, Florida, off County Road 210, just west of St. John's Parkway. What is going on, everybody? It is Monday, July 27th, and we had an exciting weekend of sports. The final day of EPL soccer, which we'll get to later, all teams playing at 11 a.m. That was exciting. Baseball was back, obviously, opening weekend. Um, Some interesting stuff happening there, so talking about that as well. And a big story out of the NFL, and no, this does not involve coronavirus. These are the things I want to talk about, so let's talk about it. In the NFL world, Pro Bowl safety Jamal Adams gets traded from the Jets to the Seahawks in a blockbuster trade, one of the biggest trades we've seen this offseason. And it exposed some beef that he had with uh, Le'Veon Bell, actually. Uh, Jamal Adams, I guess, courted Le'Veon Bell into New York, said all these great, wonderful things about the city and the organization, only to kind of uh, turn around and, and talk out of the other side of his mouth and want out of New York as fast as possible. So Jamal Adams got what he wanted, and he is now with the Seattle Seahawks. And it makes me wonder, does that type of trade make the Seahawks any more of a favorite in the NFC? You'd have to believe so, but to be honest, The Jamal Adams trade doesn't really affect the Seahawks standing as much within that conference. Yeah, it's a great conference top to bottom with the Cardinals now on the rise. Obviously, we've seen what the Rams can be. We've seen what the 49ers are with Jimmy G. But I think the Seahawks, even without Jamal Adams, were a Super Bowl favorite in the NFC up there uh, with the likes of the Saints and others and, and obviously Tampa Bay now. So it'll be interesting to see how that affects things, but obviously a lot of turmoil between him and the Jets. So I'm sure the Jets and himself are happy to finally get this over with. Uh, other other news uh, in the MLB opening weekend, a very exciting weekend. I think a, a lot of surprises Um, Actually, the fastest there have been no undefeated teams remaining since 1954. So right now there are no teams undefeated. Everyone's either two and one. Everyone's either two and two, three and one, whatever it is. There are no unbeaten teams in the MLB fastest. That's happened since 1954. Um, The Marlins have had some people test positive recently for coronavirus canceling today's game against the Phillies. Um, or uh, against the Orioles. Um, the, the team is actually stuck up in Philadelphia, so that'll be interesting to see what happens there. And Justin Verlander reports coming out about his elbow that there were going to be issues that he would be out for uh, the remainder of this 60-game season. He comes out and disputes those, so I guess we'll have to look further into what happens there. So those are kind of some of the things that happened in this weekend in sports. We'll get to other stuff in the Puji Parlay portion of the show coming up after this interview, and I'm excited for this interview. It's part three of the four-part series, Back to Sports, and today we have NBA basketball. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this. I have my NBA panel with me, so excited to talk about maybe some of the expectations of the NBA bubble, what to see from some of the teams and some of the players, and just overall what the sense is from a lot of the fans uh, entering into these games coming up this weekend. So uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy this interview brought to you by Strings Sports Brewery. And uh, be sure to stick around for the Puji Parlay presented by Shores Pub Mandarin portion following. So thanks for tuning in and enjoy. Yes, as always, thank you to Strings Sports Brewery in North Jacksonville on Main Street, just north of downtown. They do a fantastic job there as always. So uh, thank you to them for supporting the podcast as well as Cimarron Golf Club and Shores Pub Mandarin, uh, always doing what they can to support uh, the podcast. But last week I brought you uh, some sports is back content. We had baseball. uh, We had some soccer talk last week. But this week I do want to get into the other uh, two major sports in America that are making their comeback uh, towards the end of this week. So uh, we're really looking forward to it. Um, Basketball is making its return. And I'm not going to lie. Anyone you ask that knows me, I'm not the biggest basketball fan. Sure, I will watch March Madness when it's time for that in college basketball. Maybe I'll watch the NBA Finals just to see if LeBron can get past whoever's matched up on the other side. But not the biggest basketball fan. But what I will say is this year I am looking forward to it simply because we haven't had much sports content anyway. So I do have a great panel here that I'm going to ask some different questions to just based on uh, the format coming up, what to expect those types of things. So I do real quick want to jump into a buddy of mine, Zach, who was actually on an episode previously talking Miami Dolphins. Well, here he is to talk some Miami Heat basketball, which I know he's excited about because the Miami Heat are right in the thick of it and they have a great young team. So Zach, uh, from your standpoint, 
what are you expecting to see from the Heat coming out of this quarantine and, and what, what their performance is going to look like, um, I guess almost in a broad sense uh, for any team coming out of this quarantine? So for – well, first off, thank you for having me, Justin. It's uh, an honor to be here on the basketball podcast. I, You know me, I love basketball, so um, pleasure to be here. But, yeah, to come out of the quarantine for – in the broad spectrum of everything, every team, it's going to be very unique to see how these guys uh, play. Um, you know, during quarantine, it seems like they all weren't together and practicing together. So that's going to be pretty, uh, like you said, unique experience, but coming uh, for the Miami heat though, they have, they have a young core, but they also have very good veteran presence and, it's all-star veteran presence and Jimmy Butler. And I think he's going to be a good guy to be able to lead these uh, young guys, um, hold them accountable. Cause that's a huge thing in this, in the new bubble that they're creating, um, hold these guys accountable, make sure they're not doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Um, especially with the snitch hotline, like you just want to always be on top of your toes and make sure you're following the rules. Um, also the addition of Andre Iguodala and Udonis Haslam, I mean, we've had Udonis Haslam, but he's the captain, one of the, the now the oldest uh, guy in the NBA. Um, him, along with uh, Andre Iguodala, who is a champion, a former finals MVP, going to be great veteran presence, um, especially for the young guys that are going in there uh, playing their heart out. So, And, yeah, we talked briefly in the baseball uh, podcast last week about the players having to self-police themselves. So I'm, I'm kind of interested to see – uh, what goes on with that? We've already heard rumors uh, this past week, actually, um, or this week during the recording about the hotline already being used and different players' feelings on it. So it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds. And you mentioned Jimmy Butler, obviously. Uh, he was with my Timberwolves for a while, so I got to see uh, him perform with Andrew Wiggins and Kat and you know, all them, of course. But I think in basketball, it's interesting when you talk about veteran presence. Maybe it's more important in basketball than any other sport based on how two-way the players go. I mean, obviously, if you have a veteran quarterback in the NFL, you can't really beat that. That's something any team would ask for. But that type of veteran leadership is really important, especially in the sport where there's a lot of young guys. You know, you want to keep composure, things like that. So I'm excited, like you said, um, just kind of see how these teams respond coming out of the quarantine, see who kind of kept up with their training and everything. But now I want to kind of jump over to uh, just north of Miami, to the Orlando Magic real quick. I want to uh, welcome in Jacob. Um, Jacob, if you could join me real quick. Take me through a little bit uh, what the format is uh, for this return. Just briefly kind of what fans can expect. Is this going to be a normal return? How are the playoffs going to look and so on? So obviously we, um, we finished off, like we stopped right before the season would have finished. So we still have games to be played. Um, the way they're going to do it is they took um, – the eight seeds from either side of the, of the league, as well as teams that are within, I think, five and a half-ish games, um, still within capable of, of making that ninth seed. And they're going to play a final eight games, everybody. But the difference is they're going to be playing those final eight amongst all playoff caliber teams. So you mentioned I was a Magic fan. I'm guessing you can see here. What stinks for us is we were going to have one of the top easiest schedules to finish out the season. We were looking to, to end strong. Now we got to play against – all playoff caliber teams to finish off. Um, once those eight games are finished by everybody, if the ninth seed on either conference is within four games or less, that ninth seed and that eighth seed are going to play a tournament. And basically it's going to be double elimination for the eight and single elimination for the nine. So if the nine beats the, the eight, they got to play another game and beat them again to, to take over the eight. If the eight beats them once, then the eight is safe. And, you know, the Magic are probably one of the teams that were put in a spot where that could, could have been dangerous. I'm a little more confident now because I hear that John Wall and Bradley Beal aren't going to be there. Um, Bradley Beal was popping off for like 50 points a game right before the season ended. Um, so we'll see if, if the Magic, too, can maybe jump up to seven, you know, with I hear a lot of the Nets players aren't even going to be there. So it's going to be crazy to see if this year has an asterisk next to it with whoever wins or whatever happens because – there's a lot of guys not going to be there, um, but that's the current format. Eight final games. Um, the nines potentially might get a chance to, to jump the eights, and then it will be regular playoff basketball from there. And I'm glad you mentioned that about the Wizards. Um, in the East, there's nine teams that have made it to the bubble, and in the West, there's 13 teams that have made it to the bubble, and conveniently, the NBA has found a way 
to get superstar Zion Williamson uh, some TV time after uh, maybe looking like they weren't going to make the playoffs uh, with the Hornets. Uh, obviously, right now, news just broke that he left um, the bubble for a family matter, so we'll see what that entails with quarantine and him coming back. I imagine the NBA is going to do everything in their power to get him on the court, uh, as he is one of the most marketable people or players in the sport. So it'll be exciting to see what happens uh, with that playoff format. It kind of reminds me of almost like the MLB wild card game, like you mentioned with the eight versus nine matchup, where it seems like there's a little bit more on the line. And then, of course, uh, you just have to go on to play the Raptors or the, uh, the Celtics, potentially, whoever it may be in the East. Uh, that's dominating at that point. You got the Bucks up there as well with uh, Giannis, of course. But uh, the third guy I got here uh, up, in, up in New York, so I'm sure he's staying safe. Some good news out of New York, zero reported deaths from COVID-19 just recently. So very happy to hear that for your sake, being up in that area of the country. Uh, with the Knicks, obviously the Knicks aren't going to be in the bubble. Uh, they missed out on the Kevin Durant signing a little bit ago last offseason, so that was a little tough to stomach. Um, from your standpoint. Now, when I cut to your screen, there's not going to be any fans behind you, which is what we're all expecting to see when we do get to the bubble. What do you think it's going to be like someone that goes to all these games working for the New York Knicks, um, uh, Madison Square Garden, where there's always so many fans or, you know, it's it's one of the biggest arenas or well-known arenas. What's it going to be like at this bubble without fans? How is that going to affect the games? Well, first off, Justin, thank you for having me. Uh, that was a little rough intro. Uh, hit me in the heart a little bit, but it's fine you didn't mention Kyrie or Zion. I'll take it from there. But um, it's going to be different. I mean, especially at MSG, just seeing people all the time. I know it's kind of hard to believe with the way the team's performing. But, I mean, we have fans coming in and out just being right above Penn Station. It's easy for commutes and things on that end. But, I mean, at the end of the day, safety is always going to be the number one concern for everybody. Uh, I would hope so in the United States. Um, I know that, obviously, no fans. But I know – I don't know if the NBA is going to do the same thing, but the TBT, they had uh, covers all around with sponsorships. I'm not sure if the NBA is going to do the same thing, but essentially I would picture it. But also um, going back to safety, at the end of the day with this bubble, I truly feel like it's more safe than what the MOB and, M and uh, NFL are going to do with travel restrictions. Um, they are strict. As Zach mentioned, uh, the uh, snitch hotline is a big thing, just keeping people accountable and it's already been used. So I mean, at the end of the day, safety is the number one concern over there. I think Adam Silver has done a great job putting this together, and I do feel like it's going to work at the end of the day. Obviously, you're going to have people as Zion. I mean, stuff comes up where you have to leave, get tested, and things on that end. But keeping everybody uh, with no coronavirus in the bubble, and as long as they do safety protocols, I really feel like it's going to be safer than any of the other leagues, what they're doing. Yeah, and, and you look at it, you look at the return of sports. Uh, hockey took the bubble approach as well. The NFL opted not to take that approach. Sometimes I think that they think they're too big to fail, uh, and they don't think they need to play by the rules as everyone else does. Um, and then baseball, of course, is you know probably the least contact sport out of those four sports. Um, they're coming back and playing in their home ballpark, so we'll see what happens there. But you did mention Adam Silver and the job that he's done uh, with the NBA. Zach, I want to bounce it over to you real quick. When the NBA kind of announced this uh, plan, I guess, back in uh, May, I think is when it originally kind of started getting talked about, it really seemed like there wasn't too much time between initial discussions and the time that this deal finally got set in place. At least not too much time compared to baseball that dragged their feet as long as they could. Uh, what do you think that's attributed to? Uh, kind of what are your thoughts on that? All right. Well, so when it comes to basketball, I definitely would say with the NBA, they do have probably the greatest like leadership uh, team. I mean, you see it from Adam Silver. He's very, he's just very progressive, very player first. Um, he's player oriented, looks out for the players, in my opinion, more than the other um, commissioners of the major sports in this country. I, I mean, I don't I know m much about the NHL, um, but, like, when you look at the MOB and the NFL, Adam Silver definitely tops the ranks of those uh, commissioners. But also, when you compare the NBA and NHL, the NHL, you have a lot more international players than the NBA. So it was just probably a lot easier to get them all to agree and all to to, to make it the, the logistics behind it was just easier. Just, you didn't have to worry about so many players coming over back from Europe, from um, other parts of the, uh, the, the world. 
And, I mean, you see it with the NBA. They had Nikola Jokic, one of their uh, superstar um, international players, who he even had trouble getting over here um, to get to the bubble. So I think that was a huge part that the NBA doesn't have as many uh, international players as the NHL and didn't have to take that into consideration. But overall, I definitely would have to agree with uh, Richie that, yeah, the bubble um, is going to be just – I think it's going to be very safe, especially if these players are held accountable. and. Some people don't agree with the snitch hotline. I'm actually in favor for it because I do think we have to consider everybody's health and you don't want these players to go, go uh, breaking these rules and then going back home to their, uh, if they get eliminated, they go back home and get their family sick and all that. So I agree with the bubble and I do think Adam uh, Silver has done a great job with it so far. And, and now Jacob, I kind of banking off of what he just said uh, or what Zach just said some players have opted in all sports, I think, to, to maybe just sit out and say, hey, I'm just going to call this season a wash. You already mentioned with Bradley Beal and John Wall with the Wizards. Um, what are your opinions on players opting to sit out? I asked this in the Back to Baseball podcast last week. Um, but what are your players or what are your opinions, I guess, on, on players opting not to participate? And uh, should they be criticized uh, by the fans of the teams? I mean, at the end of the day, like, like Zach said, I agree that Adam Silver is probably the best commissioner currently in sports, um, at least that I know of. And I think he's put a, a good um, plan in. But at the end of the day, if, if a player is not comfortable, this is a global pandemic we're talking about. Like, you know, he, he's a player in this league. But if, if he feels it's his, you know, obligation to not be a part of it and he wants to keep himself and his family safe, I mean, I'm not going to hate on him for it. Um, I know, like you said, the, the two guys from the Wizards, I know people from the Nets aren't going to be there. I think Victor Oladipo, the Pacers, is not going to be. There's different guys. So it's like I'm not going to criticize a, a man for making a decision like that when there's like a, a global, you know, pandemic, like killing people around the world. I mean, I think they put a good plan in place to, to avoid people um, as long as they follow the rules from like spreading anything or catching anything. But like I said earlier, I think this year might just have that asterisk next to it. So, I mean, if they weren't a part of it, it's it's just going to be a year that we get past and we move on. And, you know, they're going to they're gonna take their own health in, in consideration into that. And, yeah, you mentioned that, you know, just kind of move past this year and, and, and move on. You know, Shaquille O'Neal came out a few weeks, maybe a month or two ago, and said that, just kind of, hey, let's just totally scrap the season. Let's just get everyone healthy. Let's just get back to normal or as normal as can be and return for the uh, 2021 season and see about getting uh, all players back to healthy with fans in the arena. So who knows uh, what's going to happen there for next season even. Let's just get through this uh, bubble life, I guess, is what they're calling it. And then, Richie, for you, Jacob mentioned the asterisk uh, next to the, the maybe the finals champion, whoever it may be. Do you think coming out of this quarantine, there's a chance for maybe some of these six or seven seeds to make a bit of a run um, simply based on some superstars maybe not participating, uh, maybe some rust still uh, being, you know, on, on, on the skin, just kind of shaking it off throughout the, the first few games. Uh, what are, what's your idea of that? Or do you think it's going to be pretty much chalk uh, moving, moving through into the playoffs, uh, into the finals? I honestly think that with everything going on, it's the exact opposite. I don't think there should be an asterisk. I don't think there's anybody ever remembers, what was it, 55 regular season wins that – I don't remember. Was it the Heat uh, that they won a championship win during the lockout year? Nobody remembers that. I mean, people are obviously going to remember this, but at the end of the day, when we talk about superstars, you still got the top players playing, essentially. Kyrie, KD, they weren't going to play in the playoffs. They were hurt. Bradley Beal, I mean, he was injury. It wasn't because of COVID. And then Oladipo's still in the bubble. He might actually play. Zion's going to be, I mean, God willing, Zion, hopefully, uh, with personal problems, he'll be back. I just feel like at the end of the day, um, if you're electing to play and you could go through what's everything, everything going on in the world right now, and you still have a mindset to play and the competition's there, players are there. I don't think there's an asterisk. I think that obviously some teams, I guess, have a, a better shot to upset. I don't think so because most teams still have their full roster and injuries happen at the end of the day, every single year, players don't play every single year. So I just feel like it's another year and let's get basketball started. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see from that standpoint. I mean, I've heard opinions on both sides of it. I, I more so stand on that side where everyone's playing under the same rules. You know, players are going to make what they – or make the decision they think is best for them and their families. 
So, so we'll see what happens. I think, uh, you know, the NBA is obviously excited to just get back to, to getting some TV revenue from a business side of things and uh, kind of capturing some eyeballs. It'll be interesting, though, because with uh, all the sports returning at the same time, and I mean, even now we've already had golf, NASCAR, UFC, soccer all returning. Um, outside of UFC, those other sports are pretty contactless, including baseball. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, sports like basketball returning with, you know, more body to body contact, seeing how those results happen. But what, I mean, for any of you, if any of you want to answer this, what's going to happen, you know, the night before a game, if, you know, you're setting your game plan and it comes back one or two of your superstars test positive, um, are, are there going to be expanded rosters? Is it just going to be plug and play and keep moving? Uh, what, what's going to happen with that? Well, I'll, I'll jump in right there and um, say, I, I mean, I guess the, the teams are probably going to do like a plug and play thing, but I don't, I don't see how it could ha- like these guys are going to test. I mean, I can under, I could see it happening, testing positive a couple here and there, but it's going to be very interesting. These guys are getting um, actually uh, Matisse uh, Thibel from the 76ers has a YouTube, uh, a YouTube channel also that uh, he, um, he's doing like a day to day in the bubble. And these guys are getting tested constantly. Like the when they wake up, they get tested, they go to practice after practice, they're getting tested again. It's just constant testing for these guys. So I think they're going to be very on top of their uh, stuff and make sure these guys aren't testing positive. So overall, I do think the bubble is going to be a great uh, situation. It's going to depend on if these guys follow the rules. I mean, we had one guy from the Sacramento Kings, uh, 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 Rashawn Holmes, I think it was, who went outside the boundary to go get Postmates. So that's a little issue there we had. But I mean, we'll fig- I think they'll figure that out. Let them know like, hey, man, you can't be going this far out. This is where you got to stay. So um, I think overall, though, it's going to be – I don't think we're going to see that many positive tests. Um, it's not like these guys are going back home, going out into the public. So I think it's going to be very good overall. Yeah, and to Zach's point, uh, to be back off of that, the TBT, uh, the tournament that just ended, they had testing, and I was looking at it uh, a little bit beforehand, that before quarantine there was like 40 people who tested positive for corona. They had to go through procedures again. Then they came back, and then there was like 10. And then eventually in the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals, there was not a single person tested positive. So I feel like the safety protocols are there just because these people are getting tested two to three times a day. If they wear a mask, they don't leave the premises, and they just abide by the rules, I I think everybody should be good. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Like I said, not the biggest basketball fan, but looking forward to watching sports. And who knows, maybe this type of situation will be what gets me into basketball long term. Jacob, for you, I know you're you're a very big basketball fan. You'll live and die by basketball and being a fan of it. If you had to tell someone like myself um, that maybe isn't the biggest fan of basketball, why is now the time to start watching basketball and getting into the sport? Well, I think what's crazy about this year, and I'm really excited to see, is that we're talking about superstars like LeBron James who are going to be playing a playoff um, that they've they've been resting for a couple a couple months like obviously they've been working and and practicing and and training but we're gonna see LeBron James go into the playoffs with a couple months of not playing you know seasonal basketball where he's just grinding every day you know there's two there's two ways this could either like we'll see some rust probably initially but it won't last but we're gonna see guys that are going in you know not worn down. I know like um, Kawhi was one of the, one of the big people, people talked about, you know, sitting games, you know, you know, saving themselves for later when the games mattered, we're going to see all these superstars healthy and, you know, coming back. I mean, Jonathan Isaac on the magic, he's not like a superstar by any means, but he's someone that's been like, you know, rehabbing and they're talking about, does he come back? We're seeing guys get healthy. We're seeing guys, you know, train and, you know, shake off rust. And I'm just going to, I'm going to say this now, this could be one of the most entertaining top to bottom playoffs we've seen in a while where everybody is at full strength and full go by the time it starts. Yeah. And um, I'd like to jump in there too, if you don't mind. Um, and just mention, say, I think this to somebody that doesn't watch basketball that much, this may be the best basketball you're going to watch. First off, there's not going to be fans, which that is a – just imagine 
Le, a LeBron James. When you, when you see these videos of guys playing summer ball, like in a regular open court, that's what you're going to see uh, in this in this tournament in this uh, playoff atmosphere. There's not going to be the fans. There's not going to be fans getting in uh, these players' heads or stuff. It's just going to be solid basketball back and forth, and it's just going to be like Jacob said. These guys are going to be rested. Also, that play in the Eastern Conference. I think it's pretty set right now, but that Western Conference, let me say, you have the Memphis Grizzlies with the John Morant, the Pelicans who were like the best offensive team once Zion was on the court, and then people are forgetting about the Portland Trailblazers who were in the Western Conference Finals last year, who has Dam- they have Damian Lillard who's like pop- could arguably be a top three candidate for MVP this year, and it- it's just – it, anything could happen, but I do think you're going to see some of the best basketball that we have seen. It's just going to be pure talent going back and forth, rested players, and there's not going to be that uh, in-game atmosphere. It's just going to be AAU basketball, great solid stuff back and forth. Well, that's good stuff, guys. No, I appreciate all that feedback on on the sport and the return of the sport. I know for me personally – I'm looking forward to maybe getting some taco fall action, um, get, get him out there on the court, get him some playing time. Let the world see taco, right? That's what, that's what we got to uh, get the exposure up to. We got some taco fall action. So I appreciate it again, guys. Uh, definitely we'll have to keep in touch as the basketball season progresses, as the playoffs come around, keep talking basketball, and, and hopefully with the power of you three, get me into the sport of basketball. Uh, keep me, hold me accountable to watch some of the sport as well. So I appreciate it again. And you guys take care. All right. Thanks for having us, Justin. Appreciate it. Peace. All right, guys. So again, thank you to strings sports brewery for uh, bringing you that interview. They do a great job over there. Looking forward to getting over there to watch some sports in the coming evenings with basketball and hockey coming back, baseball already back. So looking forward to getting over there and showing them some support like they do for me. Um, But I guess for Poochie Parlay presented by Shores Pub Mandarin, we will start in the world of NASCAR briefly. Most recent race at Kansas was this past Thursday. Um, So an interesting time slot for there, but Denny Hamlin did come out on top. He called his shot and ended up winning. Uh, Kevin Harvick was close behind in fourth, so we missed that top three, but he was right there in fourth. Martin Truex came in third, so it was nice to hit that top five. And our boy Ryan Blaney fell off the face of the track uh, late in the race and ended up finishing in 18th. So it was a little bit of a bummer there. It was a fun race, though. A lot of restarts towards the end with a lot of accidents. Uh, Rex, glad everyone walked away safely, but uh, always enjoyable to see some action happen in these races with some great restarts. Then in the world of golf, also starting on Thursday, uh, we had the golf tournament from this past weekend. Um, you know, it was a, was a decent tournament, not too big of a turnout. The big storyline, Dustin Johnson withdrawing after Thursday. He's having some back issues. Um, you know, still not too sure what's going on with him. In my opinion, one of the most overrated golfers over the last three or four years. But that's just my opinion. Um, but Michael Thompson ended up winning with a score of 19 under, I believe. But it was exciting. A lot of guys shooting low on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we did hit the Harris English top 20. We did miss the Lucas Glover top 20. So kind of broke even in the golf world. Ended up about uh, $5 Uh, up on the weekend this week in the golf world is pretty interesting barracuda championship happening now Um, it's one of the few weeks in pga tour season where there are two tournaments because wgc does begin on thursday and i believe that is up in memphis for the uh either first or second time the wgc will be in memphis they used to have the saint jude invitational there uh, but now wgc in memphis so we'll get you those picks here in the next few days but was happy with the outcome of the golf tournament and then baseball was back Baseball, like I mentioned earlier, uh, was a fun weekend of baseball. A lot of good games going on. A lot of surprises, too. First time since 1954, like I mentioned, or fastest since 1954. There are no unbeatens left. Um, and, and just kind of a lot of surprises. Orioles um, up, you know, beating the, beating the Red Sox. I believe they're 2-1. and one. Um, So that was a pretty big surprise there, I would say. Um, Obviously, I'm going to see what happens moving forward with the season with these positive cases coming out of Miami. Uh, But I did hit two picks on Friday and Saturday, so that was pretty nice. And then as well, rounding it out on Sunday morning at 11 a.m., all the EPL teams were playing. Uh, So I did a nine-leg, $1 parlay to win 1000 
did not hit that. Hit about five of those picks, but I did hit a two pick, a two leg parlay in EPL soccer with Southampton and Arsenal both winning. So that was nice to go up about five units there. So uh, that's all for Poogee Parlay presented by Shores Pub Mandarin. Uh, be sure to be on the lookout for more picks in the coming weekend with NASCAR returning to New Hampshire with WGC in the golf world. I always enjoy those. And then also some hockey picks, some NBA picks, and uh, who knows, maybe even some baseball picks if they keep playing. So thanks for tuning in and uh, be sure to go enjoy the rest of your Monday and the rest of your week and, and get look, look forward to uh, uh, some more sports action this coming weekend. Thanks. Be sure to follow our show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and other podcast streaming services, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out unique video elements for each interview.